Hey guys, my name is Dave Bennett, and I'm going to show you a free and easy way to create up to 450 subdomains per hour onto basically any website out there so that you can create subdomains for yourself, for your projects, for your clients' projects, uh, pretty much anyone. And you're doing it because you know reasons to create subdomains. Some people do them for keyword matching, other people do them to organize information on a website. Google likes subdomains, it likes the organization of information on a website so without further ado let me just show you an easy way to do this automatically okay so first you would come to software-installer.com and that is a collection of tools it's what we've turned it into over the course of time is a collection of tools most are free some are premium but for instance this one here with the 450 subdomains an hour it is free okay so it's really really easy for you to get into this thing and make it work all right totally awesome so when you go there, uh, then you're going to um, click here for registering. Okay, this is top link here is to register. The bottom one is if you come back and you're trying to see where to log into the free version, you would click there to log in. Okay, so when you register, okay, it's going to bring you to this page where you can register. So you just enter a first and last name in email for delivery and a coupon code. Somebody probably gave you a coupon code, which is probably how you found your way here. Uh, and if nobody did, if you find your way here some other way and you don't have a coupon code, it costs five bucks to get one, just get one here, okay? You can pay with a credit card or PayPal, and then you'll have a coupon code. And since the tool is really saving you a tremendous amount of time and effort, it's worth five bucks, certainly. If you can do 10 hours worth of work in a single hour and you won't make mistakes because it's not like doing it manually, it's worth it. So anyway, whatever way you do it, go ahead and get in, and then you can use this information here. It's telling you how to log in. Okay, go to free.software-installer.com and change your pass after you log in. Okay, so you're going to go and you're going to actually fill in the login stuff at free.software-installer.com. The rest of this just happens automatically on the URL. Just go there and log in. Okay. And that'll bring you the, into, into the system where you can start to add your websites, okay? So I went to my website list. Now, what am I going to add? I'm going to add a cPanel. So what does that mean? Let me step back long enough for you to see the rest of this process so that we can go through it correctly. So I've got a website called moji-samples.com. And it's just a demo site. I put stuff up here so I can show people how things work. So right now, I have three websites up here on subdomains, okay? So who knows why? I'm doing them maybe for show. Maybe I'm running them to uh, a company. You know, whatever reason I want. Somebody else I can teach them to go get their own domain name and forward it to here and mask it, right? So it looks like their domain name, even if it's hosted here. So you can host different websites for different clients in one spot. You know, you can charge them to maintain the site, improve upon the site, whatever it is. You know? So I got a jewelry site, a painting, house painting site, and a spa site. They're all different. They all do different things, okay? So anyway, here's the point. As long as I can go here, website, you know, .com, .net, .org, whatever, slash cPanel, right? cPanel. And that brings me to a page like this with the cPanel, and I can log in. All I need to know is the domain name, the username, and the password. Okay, and I can add those in, whoops, to here. I'm going to add the new host. It's a cPanel, not a whole server, just a cPanel. And it is moji-samples.com. And let's see. And the password. Okay, that's right. All right, I added it. Can I add more? Yeah, can I batch upload hundreds? Yes, okay, you're putting them in your system. You're the only one who sees them and has access to them. Anyone else who logs in, logs into their own area. So like I said, when you get the, here, change the password, okay? And that way, just you know it. You can log in, and you can put stuff up, and then you can delete them when you're done with them if you want. If you need your privacy, just keep your list. Because it takes seconds to batch upload all of the ones you want, and then just seconds to delete them all. You know, you can delete them all, whatever, okay? So this doesn't do anything permanent on your website. It just allows you to make changes to your website remotely, okay, in a very easy way. All right, so now that I added it, I can do all kinds of things with it. I can install stuff, manage subdomains, deal with databases, 
um, create portable panels. I can minify um, HTML files and CSS and JS. I can minify images. I can use an images optimizer. It's a separate thing I'll discuss in a different video. There's a lot of stuff you can do with these websites for free. Okay, that's why it's worth it. So let's do our bit right now. We are going to basically do this. Okay, this is the part where you might want to start taking notes. We're going to install. Okay. And what are we going to do? We're going to basically batch install a simple little file which allows us the right to create the subdomains. Okay, so we've got to create some kind of a simple little file that we can put in the system and it'll allow us to create the subdomains. Because if it's going to create the subdomain, it's got to put a file in there and extract it. Okay, because it's just how it's built, but it's very easy. Okay, so we are going to first create our little dummy file. It's basically a dummy file. And stick it in our file repository so we can keep files that we want to install on the websites here, right? And then we're going to use that dummy file, which it's basically going to be a text file that just says, yep, a subdomain exists here. Congratulations, you made it work. All right, so let's just create that dummy file right now. I'm going to pull this thing to the side. I'm going to create that file. It's going to be a text file. I'm just going to call it uh, subs. Okay. And inside it's going to say this subdomain exists. Okay. And that's awesome. So it's just a way of letting me know it's there. Now I'm going to zip it up because everything we install is zip files and SQL files. Okay. So there it is. That's the one. So now in here, what am I going to do? I'm going to choose it, right? I'm going to put it in my repository. So I'm going to just stick it there. I can see it and I'm going to upload it there. It's right here. Okay. Now, what can I do? I can install it with batch installation because we're going to create a lot of subdomains. Okay. So what we have to do is paste the information we need in here. So I got to create that information. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to download a sample, okay, and it'll give me a sample. I'm going to open it up, okay. This is going to be real simple. We're actually much of the way done with this, and I'll show you the proof of it pretty soon and how you delete those subdomains too before we leave so you just know how to do it. Okay, this is kind of cool. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this, most of it for free, <laughs> enable editing. Actually, you can do all of this for free. So what we really need is just this. Our server really means our top level domain and then the domain name. So in case you had add-on domains, then it could be the top level domain and an add-on domain. In my case, they happen to be the same thing, moji-samples.com. All right. So I'm going to just click and drag it. Whoops. Grab that little box in the corner and drag it over there. Now they're both highlighted. So grab the box and drag it down for however many I want to do. Okay. What are we going to do? We're going to put subdomains here. So we're going to have our subdomain one, subdomain two. So I need this column. I do not need database columns because we're not going to do anything with databases right now. So I can delete them. Just literally delete them. Okay. And I need a zip file, right? That I'll copy from my repository. I don't need SQL, user pass, security key, email ID, connection file. I don't need any of that for what I'm doing right now. All I need are these four columns right here. The first two are done, basically. Now, how do I get the uh, from the repository? I'm going to go back to my repository, find my file. This is it. That's my dummy file. I'm going to hit the copy path. Okay, it just told me the path, right? So I'm going to literally just paste it and drag it down. Okay, and really, it's a question of how many do I want to install. I could drag these columns down forever, right? I could drag this down a thousand. I could drag that. I could just drag that down a thousand. Okay. But we're not going to sit here and watch a thousand. We just need to see the point, right? Now, here's where I go to my keywords because I got to create subdomains. So I'm going to just open these keywords. Okay. And this is for another project I'm going to start. Okay. So I'm just going to grab like five of these. Okay. And copy them and just paste it into this column. Okay. Double click that to expand it out. All right. And then that way we can just say, okay, let's see this thing in action, right? Now, keep in mind, subdomain should not have spaces. So we are going to fix that now. We're going to have broken paths. So we're going to replace every space in that column. Okay, I highlighted what I want to change. Replace a space with a dash. OK, 
Okay, that's it. All right. I told you by the time you double this video, you're going to be able to do this on your own because we're done. Okay, we are actually done. So let me let me um, just show you what we're doing. We go back here to batch installation, and we just paste the whole thing. We literally copy this whole array with the headers. Okay, you need the headers so the system knows what column is doing what here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in here. Boom. Okay. And I can process it just to make sure it recognizes what's going on. There, it's all verified. It's ready to install. So here we go at the rate of 450 an hour. But first, let me just show you the before and after, right? So here we have our website with our three subdomains on it. If I just refresh it, just kind of saying that's all we got on there right now, right? And then we had our three websites, you know that. Okay. Now I it, and like I said, as long as you can get to the C panel, you can do this with your websites. Okay. Now we're gonna go in there. And I did, I logged in, right? I'm gonna go to the file manager on the one hand and subdomains on the other. So I can show you both ends of the process, right? Here is the file manager, right? I go into the public HTML folder where all the uh, files that people are meant to see exist. And that's where we have our folders, jewelers, painting, spa, and a couple of system folders that just always sit there, okay? Now what? On the other hand, I went to the subdomains tab, okay? Open that in a new tab, and that way you can see those subdomains. This is what's a pain in the neck to create manually, right? If you were going to create this manually, you're going to hand type it, basically. You're going to go like this, key-services, and you're going to go like this, key-services, and you're going to make sure it does that, and you're going to create, and you're going to give it a minute or two, then you're going to hit go back, and you'll copy the next one and paste it in. Well, that kind of is a pain, right? What we want to do is just do this automatically. So let me refresh this real quick. Okay, we only see those three. And we only saw those three folders. I can reload. Just kind of showing you because we're going to go back and forth on this a bit. We're going to add them and then subtract them. Okay, ready? This is where we do our work. I already pasted this stuff in here from the Excel file, right? So we created these nice, neat columns all of a sudden in the box because I understood what I was doing. So I'm going to just start the installation. Yes, I'm going to do it. And I'm just waiting. And the first thing I notice is, did I replace the spaces with dashes? Yeah, I replaced the spaces with dashes. Okay, it's going to say click me. Don't click it. You'll interrupt the process. It's just, you know, common sense issue we should fix sometime or another. When it gets done, the bottom one will keep going like that. But it's going to tell you, hey, we're done, right? So, okay. Yeah, we're done. So let me go back and just show you what that meant. Okay, I'm going to come into those last two tabs. If I reload, there, we got the extra folders here, right? And if I go, what did it do? It uploaded my subs.zip, and then it extracted it to create my subs.txt. How's that? And on the other hand, the subdomains, right? Boom. There we go. They all exist right now. Every one of them is good to go, okay? And that is the beauty of it. Like if I just choose one, cheap dash locksmith or something, and I go there, I'm in there, and I see what happened, right? So now if I come back to my index list, right, there you go, cheap dash locksmith, right? So just for the fun of it, let me do that, right? Cheap dash locksmith dot moji dash samples dot com, right? And there you go. I got my files right there, okay? And there it is. This subdomain exists. Now that's awesome. So anything I go to install will take over this folder and you won't even see those things. But two things. One is this. Can you delete the excess stuff? For those of you thinking ahead, you realize if I can upload a small little dummy zip file, can I upload a whole website? Yes. But then if I upload like a 10 meg zip file and extract it, I got 10 meg in the zip file and then 10 meg extracted. That's at least 20 meg, maybe more, right? If I have that for every folder, that's great and all, but can I delete the zip files to save space? Yep, you can delete the zip files to save space automatically. It's another tool. Ready? Find zip files to delete. So for any of you guys who have C panels and they're getting gummed up and you're running out of room, okay, let's select and just take a good look. We're going to decide how many folder levels deep to go. Well, we can go as deep as we want, but basically there's only two folder levels there. Let me go four deep, whatever. 
The deeper you go, the longer it'll take, but there really isn't far to go in this case, right? Because there's just not a lot there. Oh, except for the first couple of uh, the, the painting and jewelry and spa. That's true. That's going to have a lot more files for its own folders. So I probably should just go too deep. Now, I wonder if I can just switch it now. Didn't think about it. <laughs> but I might need to just refresh this process, right? Just doing, you know, there we go. All right, we got it. So now take a look. This is kind of cool. I know mine is called subs.zip. So if I do something like that, I can see them and just click them, right? Those are the ones I want to delete. Then I can just make sure all the rest of them are fine, right? And I can just remove the ones I want to remove. Watch this. There. They're gone. That was quick, right? So just to point that out again, it means this. If I reload, there's the text file, but there's no more zip file there, is there? No. <laughs> so if I just go into any one of these, I see the text file, no zip file. So that's what it did. It deleted all those zip files that were just taking up space, right? So that's pretty cool. Now, finally, creme de la creme stuff is, can I get rid of all of these extra subdomains or do I have to do it manually? Oh, man, that would stink, wouldn't it? If you could put up 450 subdomains in an hour, you sure as heck wouldn't be able to <laughs> take them down at a pretty quick speed too, right? So let's just come back. Whoops, do I log in here? And let's go to manage subdomains, okay? I'm going to select my website, whichever one from the list. <laughs> and here you go. I basically want to get rid of all of them except for the ones that I'm keeping right now, right? Like jewelers, painting, and spa. Okay? Now, when I delete them, yeah, I want to delete the files, okay? And I want to delete the subdomains. So let's go. Boom. Okay? So it's going to start deleting that stuff. It's going to undo it for me, which is great. It just means I have control, right? I have control over what I put up and what I take down, okay? And there you go. It's back to that. So let's take a look again. If we go back to our list of subdomains and refresh the page, they're gone. If we go to here and reload, we're still going to have our folders, but if we look now, they're totally empty. So then you go, what if you want to get rid of the folders too? Well, here's an easy way to think about it. I just did this batch of work all at once. So they all have the same date timestamp over here, don't they? Let me uh, let me do this. Flip it. All right. Now I got them at the top, don't I? Pretty much everything at 210 happened all at the same time. So that's from here up. Now just one quick glance, and I know that's what I want to get rid of. There's five folders here. I want to get rid of them, right? So I'm just going to delete them. Boom. I don't need to keep them in the trash can anymore, although I could just in case I need to pull them back out, right? Like if I make a mistake, I can put it back. Let me leave it in the trash for a minute so I can show you how to do that just in case you've never done it. Okay. There you go. I can reload and everything's fine. Now let's say I thought, oops, I deleted something I shouldn't. See this view trash? Go there. Okay. There it is. That's the one I should not have deleted. So I'm going to right click and hit restore key services right and yep that's what I want to do okay so now if I go back to public HTML right double click basically then guess what there it is it's back along with the other stuff so that means it's there you know if I do this there it is right along with the other stuff okay so everything's fine but of course I can delete it whether I skip the trash or not. <laughs> and I may as well just permanently delete it from the trash just out of habit, right? Okay. So there you go. There's a quick round through this entire thing. In less than 20 minutes, you totally saw the process happen live in front of your face, end to end. So now you're able to totally sign up and do it. Just go to software-installer.com and hit the register link to get started. You'll get access to those tools and more for free. We hope you like them. All right, that's our way of saying thanks to everyone who's helped us get as far as we've gotten. And we have a lot more things you might be interested in because we really do a lot. All right, thank you very much for your time. I hope you find that interesting. There you go.